Hey guys, just thought I'd show you my latest project. I'm making one of these magic mirrors that you see around quite often. Um, just thought I'd show you my take on the concept. I've basically got an old Samsung 226BW uh, LCD screen here. Um, this is the inside of the back cover, uh, where all the obviously where all the PCBs mount. You can see in between the two large PCBs, we've got a, uh, a Raspberry Pi. This is just a B+. Doesn't need to be anything fancy like a Pi 2 or anything. Um, just showing a basically a web page at the end of the day. Um, so this is it here, and you can see this is the power board um, that runs the screen and the logic board here, which uh, drives the display and takes your input from the computer. Um, I've run from the output of the power board straight into a an eBay special uh, butt converter um, just down in here. Uh, we've got 13 volts coming from here, so I'm dropping that down to just over 5 volts. Uh, I've got it just a bit more like 5.1 or 5.2, just to make sure we don't have any brownout issues on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Um, you notice here I've got a uh, pin grid array style heatsink. Um, I put this on here just because Chinese ratings tend to be slightly inflated, and I don't want to be running this transistor under here. Um, any harder than I have to. So I put that one on there. Um, I chose the pin grid array as well because I like those better than the slot style with just the lines cutting the copper block or aluminium block. Simply because these can be oriented in any direction and you still get the convection of the air running through. Whereas if it's a line style and you've got it oriented this way the air can't rise between the fins. Whereas if it's this way then it can. So with the pins it doesn't matter, the air can go through any direction that it ends up being. I've also got an extra output capacity here. This is a 100 microfarad OSCON, uh, if I remember correctly. I stuck that on there just to provide a bit of extra output smoothing because these capacitors that come with the board are pretty much going to be bargain basement quality. So I put the uh, the nicer one there just to give it a bit more, bit more help in smoothing the output for my Pi. Um, coming down here we've got basically a HDMI cable coming out that curls here a bit because the shortest I could get was about 0.5 meter. Then it comes out underneath and just loops around and plugs in using my nibbling tool to cut a, uh, a slot just for the cable. Um, you also notice a cutout in the middle here. That just allows me to access the SD card when the case is together. Um, I've cut out a piece of plastic from the, from the back case which will line up with that. Um, then over this side I've added a USB port. This is just a panel mount style and that's wired directly into the Pi. That, that will let me plug in a keyboard and mouse and whatnot so I can do some programming with the thing closed up and on the wall. And another USB port here. Um, again just wired into the, uh, the Pi directly. I took off all the, uh, the plugs and the GPIO header just to give me a bit of extra space and um, this pie was actually for another project which was going to be very limited on space. But then I repurposed it for this one. So um, I've plugged those directly in, or soldered those directly in. And at the top here, this is where my USB dongle is. That's just a genuine Pi Foundation branded one that I got from Adafruit. So that's pretty much the internals. Um, nothing too spectacular. But it just is a bit neater than the usual setup where people just get the whole enclosed screen and build a box on the back and then stuff everything on the back case with you know wood sides and and all that. The benefit of doing it like this that I found is that I can actually use this as a full integrated computer. So I can put the stand in the bottom and and I can use it as if it's just a desktop computer or as I'm doing here I can set the configuration and whatnot so that it's acting as a smart mirror. There are one or two small tweaks that I plan to do. Um, this board is always putting out 13 volts uh, whenever this is plugged in. So what happens is there's an enable uh, line that runs between these. So when you press the uh, the power button, this will turn on and it sends a signal to this and does some things, um, which turns the screen on. But 
whenever this this is plugged into the wall this board is powered up and supplying 13 volts that means unless I unplug it I can't actually power down the Pi that's no big deal because the thing's going to be always on anyway but there's no easy way with this setup to do a, a soft or a, a safe shutdown the other thing is when it is turned on for the first time the screen itself doesn't turn on until you press the power button so I want to eventually program one of the GPIOs into the power switch so when this is powered up then the Pi will then basically pulse the switch and turn the panel on and then also I want to install a switch somewhere hidden maybe maybe under the back here um, so when I press that switch it'll shut down the Pi and turn things off properly but for now it works well enough that I'll um, I'll get the thing running and on the wall to start with and then I'll start thinking about those extra features so that's pretty much it for the hardware side of things uh, check out the next video and I'll show you how to set up the software see you then